Hey guys, this is Ricky, and look what I made. I also made this. This one was pretty fun. It is a combination of Bonsai Bill and Bullet Bill, because I added the arms and the teeth. This one came out really well. I'll make a video about this guy shortly. I also printed a couple of these for my little girl and using the same techniques I was able to print a real thwomp. But let's look at this one. Um, let's make a video and I will show you from start to finish how I made this. Hey guys, this is Ricky and here is how you can make the multicolored prints on your printer. Um, first, I start off with an image with maybe three or four colors, four or five. You can do it with more, but usually images that have four colors are just about perfect. So I went and found this image online. And the first thing that I do is this is a good image, but do you see how there's this anti-aliasing? I want it to be black and then just white or especially around the eyes. I just want it to be red. So my first step is I clean up the image. So if you look up here on my, like a brush or something, or a paint bucket, this is the one. I turn off this anti-alias because what I want is just, just the image. So, so the, the first thing I really do is I do the cleanup. So an easy way that you can kind of do that is I use the little magic wand tool. I select the black and then I right click and I click grow. And I just, this, this part is the part that's tedious. So then I usually take that and I put that in another layer and I use the paint bucket tool to completely fill that in because I want to get rid of things like this, like these little one offs that are kind of out there in no man's land. I try to make sure and I take care of that. The next thing I do is I take all of the colors and I need to decide what order I am going to print them in. So if I'm looking at this model, I'm going to start off and I'm going to print white first. And then I'm going to go with the gray second. That's going to be the second filament change. And then I'm going to print black. And then the last color is going to be red. Typically, I like to do the color that is used the least last. But sometimes you have to switch things up. Now, here's where I think the magic happens. I can't print. I'm going to print the white first because that's also the lightest, even though there's not that much of it. You would think that I would want to print gray first, but um, the reason that I want to print white first is white is pretty transparent. So anything underneath it kind of shows up. So I'm going to print white first, and then I'm going to go gray, and then I'm going to go black, and then I'm going to print red last. But here's the catch. The white layer has to support all the other colors. So when I print white out, what I really need to be printing is the entire model. And that's where these little SVGs come in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my layer and I am going to select the kind of outside and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to select inverse. And then I'm going to go here to my white layer. And I am going to use the color black because the website that I use that's going to convert this <clears throat> image into something that Tinkercad can see, it needs the contrast. So this is going to be my white layer. And then the gray layer, the one that's going to be next, is going to be all of the colors except for white because it needs to hold up the red and it needs to hold up the black and it needs to hold up the gray. 
So the only colors that show through are the white layer that's underneath. So how I do that is I use a little magic wand tool. I go back to my image. I click the black and then I right click and then usually I go similar. So it gets all the black and then I hold the little shift button and I click all the grays because this is the gray color. And then I also need to get the red because it has to support all the colors underneath. So then I go to my layer that has the gray in it. And because I have everything still selected, I just go to the paint bucket tool and I make sure that it's on black. And then the gray layer is going to look like this. It's going to be all the colors except for the white. Then I go to my black layer. And then the black layer has to be all the black and then has to be the red. So I go back to my image. I click on the black again. Make sure I'm on the right layer. So I click on the black again and then I right click and I go similar. This is one of the reasons that I want just the one color. And then the black has to be all the black. And then I have, have to also include the red. So then I go back to my little SVG group and I make sure that I'm on black. And then I go to the paint bucket tool. And so the black layer is going to be just this. So it's going to, this transparent piece is going to let the gray show and it's going to let the, the white show. And then the very last layer is just going to be the red. So all I need to do is click on the red eye and then I right click and then I go similar. So it gets both of them. And then I go back to my red layer, switch to my paint bucket tool. And then there's my red layer, the very last one. So the next step after I get all of my SVGs, my red and then the black and then the gray and then the white layer, that's the, the layer order that I'm going in. I'm going to start off with the white and I'm just going to export this as a PNG. So here's my file and I'm going to call this white. And then the next one I'm going to export the next couple layers is going to be gray. And then the next one is going to be black. And then the last layer is going to be red. Now, the next step is I use this website, this little image converter that's going to convert my PNGs into SVGs so that I can import them into Tinkercad. Here's how this works. I pick my file. I'm going to start with white and then go to gray and then black and then red. It doesn't really matter the order, but I'm going to start off with white. Once it uploads, you need to click the start button. Once it finishes, it's going to automatically download it. And then I'm going to put it in a little SVG folder, just this is what I do. So I click save and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing again, except for this time I'm going to pick the white and then grays next. So once it uploads, I'm going to click start. Again, it automatically downloads. So I have my white SVG and then I'm going to have my gray SVG and then I back out. And then now I'm going to pick the black one.
And then finally, I'm going to pick the red one. And now that the red one is downloaded, I am going to open up Tinkercad. And in Tinkercad, I am going to upload, or I'm going to import all of those folders in. So I'm going to click Import, and I'm going to pick my file. I'm already in the right folder, so the one I'm going to pick first was the white, because that's going to be my bottom layer. So I'm going to click Open. If I just import this in, do you see the length is 800 by, it makes it huge. So I've played with this and I know that on this particular model, 10% scale is about the one that I want. So it's going to import this in and then I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get this ready. So this is going to be my white layer. I know it's going to be two layers thick and since I print two tenths of a millimeter, it's going to be 0.4 millimeters tall. So I'm starting with that. So that's step number one. Then I'm going to import the next color. So it's going to be white. And then the next color is going to be gray. Remember to make it 10%. Now there's a couple things that you can do here. I can adjust the height to make it 0.8, but I like to keep it so that it looks like how it's going to print. So what I do is I'm going to make the whole model go so over here 0.4 millimeters tall or in the air and it's going to be two layers thick so it's going to look like this. So do you see how I have the white in the background and then the next layer is going to be gray and then the next layer on top of that is going to be the black layer. So I'm going to import again. I'm going to pick my file and this is going to be black. Again, make it 10%. That way it makes everything all lined up nice and neat. So this is going to go on top. So I'm going to make it the color black. And it is going to be 0.8 millimeters off of the ground and the height of it is going to be two layers so it's going to be 0.4 millimeters tall. Now do you see how it's kind of working? It's kind of taking shape. I have the white layer on the bottom which is holding up the gray layer which is holding up the black layer and then the last one is the little part on the eyes and I had to make sure that the black layer included that so it has something to print on. So then I go to import I'm going to pick my file, I'm going to pick red, make it 10%. This is going to be the last filament change. And I'm going to make it the color red. Nope, not that one. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to make this the color red. And so I have 0.4 millimeters tall and then 0.8 and then 1.2, this is how tall the red needs to be off of the ground. So I'm gonna make it 1.2 millimeters tall, so it's gonna be on top of the black layer, and then it's only going to be two layers thick, so it's 0.4. Everything lines up nice and neat. And then now I just need to group this all together. So I'm just going to select them all. I'm going to click this little grouping tool. And then I just like to make sure that the color, I like the multicolor just so I can kind of see where it is. So everything's grouped together. It's going to have four colors. So I'm going to have to change the filament from gray to black to red, so three filament changes. And then the next step is I am going to export this to Cura, and then I'll show you how I do it in Cura. So I'll click this, I'm gonna click export. And then this is just gonna be my Thwomp STL. 
and I'm going to hit save. So one of the things that I like to do is after I export things out of Tinkercad, I right click and I open with 3D Builder just, just so I can see if there's any errors. So I click this and see it has this little red thing. So something's messed up with it. So I usually just click this little wrench down here. It goes ahead and repairs it. And then I just save it. And then now it's all fixed. I really don't know what it fixed. I just know that sometimes I've had some weird prints that do that. So after that's done, I just double click it. And it's going to open up Cura. So here's my model in Cura. I'm going to delete these little filament change scripts because I've already done it. So here's what my model is going to look like. First thing that I need to do is slice it. These don't take very long to print. And I just need to see that there's eight layers. And I know since I've made each layer in Tinkercad 0.4 millimeters tall, that's two layers. So this first layer is going to be white. The second layer is going to be white. The third layer is when I, I make the change. And you can see where the, the white is, is masked in. I guess it you can see through. So my first filament change, I'm going to go here to Extensions, Post Processing. The first script that I'm going to add is the filament change. And it's going to be at layer three. Because now I'm going to change it from white to gray. So gray is going to be on layer three. Layer four is going to be gray. And then at layer five, that's when I need to switch to black. That's when it prints all the black layers. So I'm going to go up to extensions and post processing again. And I'm going to do the filament change. And this time it's going to be at layer five. And then the next one's going to be at layer seven. You kind of see how this is going. So then I slice it again. So layer five is going to be gray. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Layer five is gray. Oh, wait. So white, white, and then three is gray, four is gray, five is black, six is black. So layer number seven, do you see how it's the very last thing? So layer seven is when I need to make the change to red. It's the last one. So I'm going to go to my extensions and I'm going to go to my post processing for the last one. So I have a layer change at three and then let five. And the next one is going to be the filament change at layer number seven. So now that I have this sliced, I'm going to click print with OctoPrint and it's going to print out. I really like this technique on multicolor prints. This is great for ornaments or kind of little knickknacks. Um, just a fun way. I think that the 3D printer does a fantastic job of printing in multicolor. It draws much better than I do. Thanks for watching. All right, here's a quick little time lapse of the print so you can kind of see what's going on. First, it lays down the white layer. And after it lays down the white layer, it initiates a filament change um, script. If your printer isn't capable of doing the filament change script, you can pick the posit height and manually remove the filament and manually put it in. I've just find that the filament change script is much more reliable because I only have to remove the filament and then add it into the um, extruder motor and it pulls it in, it does the rest. Um, in the past, I've had to manually push the filament in. Um, sometimes my stepper motors don't lock in place and um, I've bumped the gantry and it moves a little bit and uh, it just ruins the print. So I found that the filament change is much more reliable. Here after it prints the black, um, it took longer to change out to the red than it actually did to print out the red. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.